Hey, this is Kyle at Projection Hub, and today I'm going to be talking about how to create a business plan for a daycare facility. So what this video is not going to be is I'm not going to write an entire business plan right in front of you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through a free business plan template specifically for a daycare. So it's filled out with example information. You can get that template in the description of the video, no strings attached, because the business plan is only going to be as good as the information you put in it. So you can use this as a guide, some inspiration as you're filling it out. But the purpose of this video primarily, along with showing you the, the structure of the business plan, is going to be to focus on five key points that really could make or break the business plan's success when you're trying to get approved for a business loan. So who is Projection Hub? We have helped more than 50,000 entrepreneurs and small businesses create financial projections for their business plans, for their business loan applications, for raising investment. Actually, daycares are one of the most common businesses that we work with. We, we help a lot of uh, daycares create their financial projections for their business to be used in their business plan. And in my experience, uh, apart from you know working with all of these businesses here at Projection Hub, I previously spent nearly seven years as an SBA lender um, for an SBA micro lender. And, and we reviewed applications for daycare centers very often. And so I saw a lot of business plans and financial projections for daycares to, to get a little bit of experience. So again, I'm gonna scroll through here in the structure using this template as a guide. And then as we come across these areas of the five key points that are most important about your business plan, I'll dive in a little bit deeper and show some examples and highlight a few things there. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so here we are, we're gonna go through and kind of scroll through this. Um, two quick things I'll mention. One is if you stick around, I'll demonstrate a little bit later, but we, we offer a daycare specific financial projection template so that you'll be able to create projections if you need to. At the very end of the video, I'll give you a promo code that you can grab that template for a discount. If you don't need it, this will still be very important information. You, you know, you can ignore that piece of information. Um, and if at any point you're enjoying the content here, please like the video, that really helps us. Uh, feel free to subscribe as well. We release other daycare finance related uh, content as well, just in general, running your business and, and how that can help you. So here we go, we're gonna go through this now. You can see from this quick table of contents, the overview of the structure, you got your executive summary, a little bit more description about the business, market analysis, um, service and product line, you know, is probably a little bit too formal, you know, essentially what type of amenities and and you know programs and that kind of stuff is your daycare gonna offer. Uh, the marketing and sales strategy, and the operation structure, and then of course the financial plan projections, which is kind of our expertise. And then you'll wrap it up with the conclusion. So as we go through here, um, the executive summary. So this is really just, it's like a cover letter for a resume. So it's the short and sweet description. If you are you hand this to your lender, if you can imagine a physical paper or even a PDF and they open it as the first page they see, you kind of want to give them the highlights of everything they're about to read. Um, so that can include, you know, obviously the name, where you'll be located. Are you going to have a, a, spe a specific focus? Is there going to be something that really stands out that, you know, you want to make sure you, that comes across at the beginning, maybe the total startup costs, that kind of stuff. So really hit the high points in your executive summary. The company description is just a little bit of an elaboration of that. So maybe, you know, this is where you're going to talk about yourself or maybe your experience um, as you're going through that. And we'll do key point number one, your lender, especially for daycares, this is actually one of the industries that is it's extra particular about this, is your lender is going to want to see and know that you have the experience or your team has the experience to actually be successful with a daycare. Because it is a sensitive business topic, you know, people trusting a daycare center with their kids. You know, if when I'm taking my son to daycare or I'm picking out a daycare, I really want to feel confident that these people know what they're doing. Uh, same thing is true from a, from a lender perspective. Um, there has to be that confidence there. So this is a good section, the company description. Describe yourself a little bit. If, if you're going to be doing this in your home, for example, and it's going to be just you, then you really need to drill down. Like, why can you do this? Have you done this before? To give the lender some confidence. Um, if you're going to have other people working for you, what is their education? What's their background? What's their experience? So that's one of the five key points. There has to be relevant experience that you can demonstrate in your business plan and really make sure you focus on that. Something I, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this is contrary to popular belief, a lot of people think like, man, my business plan needs to be 40 pages long. Um, and I assure you that is not the case. As a lender, if someone handed me a 40 page business plan, which did happen often, let's just say there's no way we're going to read 40 pages of that. For industries that maybe are more novel or there's not many of them or it's a brand new concept, okay, the business plan does need to do the job of education, 
as well as demonstrating the plan for success. For an industry that has existed for a little while or, or a concept that's not novel, like a daycare facility, the job of the business plan is not to educate what you're doing, you know, or what the opportunity or what the industry is. It's to focus on your specific plan to succeed. Why is your daycare going to, to grow and pay back the loan and, you know, generate the money that you think it's going to. So that's, that's really what the key focus of this. So a five to 10 page business plan, as long as it can demonstrate that is great, you know, so don't, don't get bogged down in the link of the business plan. Just make sure you're including what's necessary. So keep scrolling through here. On to key point number two, your market analysis. So that makes it sound a little bit fancier than it needs to, but really you're just trying to demonstrate that there is a need for your service where you're going to offer it. Daycares is one of those industries that I think just in general, most people, especially if they have kids right now, just know there's a great need for childcare. The pandemic impacted that quite a bit. You know, some daycares you know, shut down when people were staying home and not as many have reopened up. And so it's, it's a bit of a transition period right now. Um, but I'm gonna demonstrate a quick example of how you can do this section. So it's not enough just to say like, you know, like here in this example, it says 25 mile radius. So actually, actually this is a little bit better maybe than I expected, but it specifically points out there are 12 other certified daycares within a 25 mile radius of the proposed location. So, you know, so let's say it's a major city and there's 12 and obviously there's gonna be demand. If it's a really small town, then maybe there's not a great, you know, market. For this sample right here, if this was gonna go one step further, it might say in that 25 mile radius, you know, there's 400,000 people living there, then that helps kind of set that table a little bit. So something you can do, a few things you can do to help demonstrate this is good old fashioned Google here has some free tools that we can use. So a few ways we can do this, I'm on Google's keyword planner, this is free. You can make an AdWords, you have to make a Google AdWords account. It's totally free to do, um, but you can use their keyword planner. So I can look for something like daycare center, near me. So you can see, or actually you can't see right here, but I'm located in the Indianapolis area. Okay. So let me, let me pull that up. I want to look in Indianapolis and it's doing kind of the greater Indianapolis area and see that map. So it's saying there's over 5 million people in that, that area. So it's going to say if someone was searching for daycare center near me and they're located in that, how often is that being searched? So let's see what it says here quite a bit, you know, so we see daycare near me almost 10,000 times a month. You can see here, look how that's growing as well. 49% over three months. So it's growing year over year up 22%. So that's a pretty good indication. Okay, there's definitely a need in the greater Indianapolis area. So if I want to zoom in a little bit more, go to good old fashioned Google search. I just search for the same thing, daycares near me. And so you can see I live on the Northeast side of Indianapolis and I can see like, you know, okay, there's a good chunk here. You know, me knowing the area, I know that this number of daycares is probably, you know, there's probably still a lot of demand that these daycares aren't that aren't meeting. Now, this doesn't include maybe, you know, the, the at-home daycares probably aren't gonna be included on this list. Nannies aren't gonna be included on this list. So this is more like certified daycare centers, but this is the type of thing that you wanna demonstrate to your lender that there's an opportunity, that there is there is a market. Here's another quick study you just found from doing some Googling that, you know, shows how few, how much the number of certified daycares is decreasing. So we know that there's a good need. So that is a quick demonstration. I'm like, do that type of stuff, include that, grab screenshots, put some numbers in your market analysis here. Okay. Moving along, describe your daycare services. Are you going to offer extracurriculars? Are you going to teach, you know, a second language? Are you going to have field trips? whatever, all the enrichment type activities, the curriculum details include that here. You have the experience with that. So you'll, you'll know what kind of detail you need to go into. And then coming up to point number three, marketing and sales strategy. In particular, what's most important about this section is how are you going to acquire customers? So saying like, we're going to have a website and post on social media isn't good enough. You got to give some confidence that you're going to have a, a good head start. You know, you're going to you're going to have no problem getting some kids in. So examples of that might be maybe you're starting an at-home daycare and you're saying, I live in a neighborhood with 450 other homes. There are a couple of hundred, you know, kids that are younger than school age and there's no daycare center within 10 miles of us. I have talked to the other families in the neighborhood and I know that if I opened up, I would have 10 kids tomorrow. That's a great example of customer acquisition. It gives you confidence. If you're going to establish a bigger center, um, you might, you know, or a facility, you might need to be a little bit more than that. You know, you might have said like, I've gained the signatures or 
I started a Facebook group and I had a thousand families join that said that they would be interested in sending people. So that's the type of stuff for customer acquisition. It's not going to be good enough to say, we're going to build a facility and people are going to show up. Now, you know, for an industry with as great a need as daycares, that might actually still work. But when you're trying to convince someone to give you money for a lender, going the extra mile and it's a helpful practice for you to give you confidence that what you're going to do is succeed to have that roadmap forward. So that is key point number three. Now let's continue to move through here a little bit. Operations plan. This, this kind of goes along with maybe the experience a little bit. So you can elaborate a little bit more on the, the makeup of your team, the structure of the business. Um, here you see details on like trainings and certifications. That's all good information to include, include in here to make sure that you've thought about that type of stuff. So, okay. And then financial projections, we are biased. This is what we think is the most important part of your business plan. Coming from my experience as a lender, this is what we spent 90% of the time looking at. You know, you read the business plan, make sure like, okay, they got these things, including these other key points I'm talking about. But what you're really drilling into when you're making a decision is this financial data and a narrative around that. So don't be afraid to include you know, more text describing what you're, you're seeing here. So all of these charts you're seeing, so we got startup costs here, and a five-year breakdown of, you know, some of the key line items from the financials, including plan for profitability. So you can see 23 all the way out to 2027. Most lenders are probably gonna wanna see at least three years, especially if you're a startup. You can see some greater detail on total kids and the rooms and all that kind of stuff, sales growth, and then key ratios. And then you'll see full-blown financial statements, financial pro formas. Uh, lenders like to call them. I'll do a quick plug here. All of these were generated with our daycare specific projection template. So this is built to be very doable on your own as DIY. Um, if you do purchase it and you have questions, of course, we'll help you answer those questions and make sure you get taken care of. But I just want to give you the confidence that we've had a few hundred people use this template to create projections for, for their daycare. So you'll be able to include the types of rooms you're going to have, how many rooms, including the, the ratio so that you can make sure the ratio is correct um, per your state's you know, requirements, how much it's gonna cost for those kids. And that's gonna generate all of this revenue data for you. You'll be able to put in your expenses that you plan for over the, the first five years and any employees you plan to have. And then it's gonna generate all of that information for you. All of the financial statements tidied up exactly how your lenders are gonna need. So that's just a quick plug. I'll, I'll go ahead and link this in the description as well and give you a promo code at the end of the video for that. So key point number four now is, are your financial projections realistic? So within the industry standards. So if you kind of come in and your revenue is way higher, your profitability is, we're gonna be 70% profit and that's going to raise that's going to raise some eyes eyebrows for your lender. So you want to make sure you're not an, an outlier, right? So the best way to do that, this is not that surprising when answer again, is to do Google searches on some of the key things: revenue, profitability, tuition rates, that kind of stuff. You want to be within not only the maybe national industry standards, but also like in your community. You know, what are other daycares charging? You don't want to be too high. You don't want to be too low. And so you can do things like what's an average profit margin for a daycare center around 15%, you know? So when I'm making my projections, I want to see, am I going to be around 15%? So this, you know, not gross, that was net. So after, you know, you backed out of these things. So 7%, 20%, that's within reason, right? So that's really important is to make sure it's going to be in line with that. Um, when is the business going to be positive cash flow? And then your lender is also going to want to know what the debt service coverage ratio is that, you know, they'll probably calculate that based on your projections, but they're going to want to see that be 1.2 or higher. And what that means is that they want your projections to see that you're going to have a dollar and 20 cents in free cash flow monthly or, or annually for every $1 of debt payment. Cause they want to see that apart from all the other things you got to pay, you also, you're going to be able to pay back the loan. Okay. So hopping back over to the business plan. Now the, the projections are going to round it out apart for the conclusion here. Um, but I have one more key point to make, and that is what we like to call skin in the game in the lending industry. So your lender is going to basically, they're going to expect you or invite you in to take some mutual risk in this. So say you show up and you're like, I need $150,000 to build out this facility for a daycare. You are going to be expected to contribute some percent of that, just like putting a down payment on a house, you're buying into the risk a little bit, you're mitigating the risk for the lender a little bit. So you're probably gonna be expected to put in 10 or 20% of the cost of that. Now, maybe you don't have cash or not enough cash, or, you know, maybe the lender is concerned about a credit score or something like that. Um, they'll try to further mitigate that with collateral. So if that's a title to a free and clear car, 
um, a second mortgage on your home, you know, something like that. Now, I a lot of people don't have a lot of sympathy for lenders, and I totally understand that. But just putting the lender hat on, you know, when I was a lender, where that's coming from is, is they don't want to do that to wreck your life if you don't pay back the loan and chase you down forever. They just want to have some assurance that, you know, they're not throwing away their money. And so you got to keep that in mind. That's where they're coming from. A lot of people give the advice of like, well, I want to keep the business separate from personal. That makes sense when it comes to bank accounts. But anyways, they, they like to keep that separate, keep things tidy from a bookkeeping accounting standpoint. I totally understand that. But when it comes to actually getting a loan, you just be prepared that that is going to be an expectation. You're going to, your, your personal life is going to be wrapped up in this because the lender's gonna to wanna to have assurances they're gonna get their pay back. So that's the quick run through of the business plan. Again, grab this template for free down in the description. Um, if this was helpful to you at all, please like the video. Feel free to subscribe to our channel for more tips about just being an entrepreneur in general and growing your business and staying on top of your financial components of that. But also feel free to reach out if you have questions. Grab this template. I promised you a discount code. You can use PH20BP to enjoy a 20% discount on the template. This template I believe is $79. And so it'll bring that cost down a little bit. I assure you that's much cheaper than if you were to have a CPA prepared it. You're going to have to have financial projections if you plan to get a loan for a daycare. And, and we also are happy to provide a, a complimentary review of your projections. If you already have some, you want an expert to take a look and give you some feedback for some potential um, pitfalls, feel free to send it to us at support at projectionhub.com. We'll give you some feedback. And yeah, thank you so much for sticking around. Best of luck.